So first of all, the sound up there is lousy. So here's what happens. I tell my people immediately, don't pay the bill for the guy that did that, okay? And then they get a story, Trump doesn't want to pay the bill. No, you know, when people do a lousy job, they did a lousy job with the sound. But the good news is you understand it. They want to raise your taxes, and that's not acceptable. I will massively cut taxes for workers and small businesses. We have a lot of taxes we're going to be cutting, getting rid of. But we're going to have some special ones. There'll be no tax on tips, no tax on overtime, and no tax on Social Security benefits for our seniors. And I'll also make interest on car loans. This is one that nobody thought of. We're going to make interest because we want to build cars, right? So this is like getting a cut in price, a huge cut. I'll also make interest on car loans fully tax deductible, but only for cars made in America. I don't care if they're made in Japan. What the hell do I want to do it for? Because affording a car is essential to restoring the American dream, and that's what we want to do. We want to bring back the American dream. We're going to do it, too. As we restore our economy, we will also secure our borders. Over the past four years, Kamala Harris has orchestrated the most egregious betrayal that any leader in American history has ever inflicted on our people. She has eradicated our sovereign border, and she has unleashed an army of migrant gangs who are waging a campaign of violence and terror against our citizens all over our country. Kamala has imported an invasion of criminal migrants from prisons and jails, insane asylums and mental institutions from all around the world, from Venezuela to the Congo in Africa. The Congo, they're letting in tremendous numbers. They're letting out all their prisoners from the prisons in the Congo, and they're coming into the United States, and they're forcing, forcing them into our country. And we're accepting them because we're led by stupid people. And she's she, she has resettled. All of these people are being resettled. You know, of Springfield, a beautiful place, Springfield in Ohio. You heard about this. 52,000 people. They put in 32,000 illegal migrants. Think of it. So they wake up one day and they've almost doubled the size of their town. They can't get into their hospitals. And the mayor's a very nice person. He wants to just help them. But you can't because the town is destroyed. And all he's looking for is interpreters because on top of everything else, they don't even speak the language. And then you have Aurora in Colorado. And that's where you see these, these thugs from Venezuela. And uh, she's resettling all of these people into communities. And in many cases, they prey on innocent American citizens. One of the deadliest and most vicious migrant gangs that Kamala has imported into our country is the savage Venezuelan prison gang called Trende Aragua. These are young thugs that's taking over apartment complexes and unleashing a violent terror spree all over America. Towns all over America are petrified that they're going to be coming here, but they're in more than just Aurora in Colorado, and the governor is petrified of them. He doesn't know what to do. Now they're even taking over Times Square in New York. Let's take a look at these guys. This is a tough group. Open borders, deadly consequences. Border crisis, record high crossings are putting a strain on cities across America. It is a full blown invasion. Armed Venezuelan gang members storming an apartment complex in Aurora, Colorado. When people talk about my 